Alright, so I just shot my Zelda video, and I gotta cheer myself up. So we're gonna talk about something good. We're gonna talk about the actual 10 out of 10 we got this weekend. Logan. I'm really happy they got the Deadpool cameo teaser out of the way at the beginning of the movie, because normally that would have been like an end credits thing, but after the ending of Logan, you don't want to ruin the tone with Deadpool showing up. You just want to sit there and cry. That was a very smart move on their part. I also like how Deadpool acknowledges Logan, but Logan doesn't acknowledge Deadpool. Like, in the Deadpool universe, he admits, hey, Logan's a movie, this is a movie, you know, satire, comedy, fourth wall. But in the movie Logan, that fourth wall is is uh, maintained. So it's okay for Deadpool to talk about Logan, but the fact that Logan didn't talk about Deadpool at all is really, really good. Because he would have ruined the tone. He would have. He can show up in the X Men movies all he wants, so that's fine. I don't care. Right away, at the very beginning of Logan, you know this is going to be a different kind of movie after the brutal violence and F words. And just the fact that the tone is so different. It's like, this is the theme from X Men. This is the theme from Logan. There's a pretty drastic difference there. For me, it's really hard to decide whose story is more tragic, Logan's or Charles's, because Charles is... Like, Logan was always, you know, he's an asshole. He's like, kind of like on his own. He's like, I don't really want any part of this. You know, he wants to just kind of... The government screwed with him. He's going to go his own way. And he only intersects with the X-Men occasionally. Logan really isn't an X-Men. Kind of like how Iron Man isn't an event. No, no, you know what? No, I'm not bringing up a stupid MCU right now. They, they wish they were as good as Logan. Whereas Patrick Stewart's entire life was around helping mutant kind and running the school. And the X-Men was kind of a side project for Charles Xavier. His life's work was the school for gifted youngsters. Which is why it is so ironically tragic that he's the one who killed them all. You know, they're talking about on the radio after he has the seizure at the casino which was an amazing scene by the way because Logan's just scoping out the P and he sees the alkali guys are there and then there's a little warning before it happens there's like a and then he just everyone freezes up and Logan's like shit and he's got to get to Charles that part was amazing everybody I mean they're bad guys sure and they're doing terrible things but they're just frozen they're defenseless some other superhero would have taken Charles and the girl and said come on let's get out of here but no Logan's sticking his claws in everyone's head that was so badass. They did kind of sign up for it, though. I mean, they were working for Alkali. I imagine the mission briefing had to be along the lines of, like, hey, we're going after two angry, indestructible mutants with claws and their psychic friend who could kill you with his mind and is kind of losing control of his power. Here's an M4, good luck. I really like the slight vibration they gave to the camera and the sound effects when he's putting his claws in the wall were so good. I think that's my favorite part of the whole movie. And Patrick Stewart in the movie is constantly, let's help these people, let's help these people, let's help these people, let's go out of our way and do good and yet he is the one who accidentally kills lots of people because he can't help it because he's having a seizure that's so sad so then they're talking about it on the radio is like a similar thing happened in westchester i'm like that's where the x-men mansion is oh no he had a seizure in the night and killed all the x-men oh man oh god that's so sad and you know what in days of future past they were kind of right it was all for nothing you know when they're talking about the ripple effect he's like you know we got we're trying to prevent the slaughter of mutant kind you know and they keep you know they keep getting met with failure after failure after failure and heg mccoy is all like you know there's a theory in time with the ripple effect that if you try to change something you throw a stone in the water the water just goes around it and he was right man we ended up with pretty much the same results as days of future past every single mutant got wiped out even after they tried to change they couldn't change it when charles xavier's like are we truly destined to this path and it's like you know what yeah you are no other superhero franchise has those kind of balls poor patrick stewart too when he's in the bed and he's like this is the most perfect night i've had in a very long time he starts crying he's like i don't deserve it. that's the scene that they're gonna play when he wins best supporting actor at the oscars i gotta say when that first happened i thought it was a dream because i saw like a super young logan i'm like what the hell is this and then he sticks his claws and charles just like you can't fool me movie this is a dream and then it shows old logan and him at the same time like oh shit Oh my, oh, they, they, they just killed Professor X. Oh God, no. 
Oh, especially when Logan is carrying him to the truck and he's like, it wasn't me, Charles. It wasn't me. I'm like, oh my God, Charles Xavier might die thinking that Logan is the one who killed him. Oh my God. Can you see why I like this movie so much? And how they wipe out that whole family at the farm. It's like, Logan knew this would happen. He tried to warn them. He's like, Charles, we're taking a huge risk by staying here. We gotta keep moving. So Charles probably feels that sense of guilt on top of everybody. Like He's like, no, let's stay and have a meal and sleep over. He's like, no, man. And how the black guy dad farm dude, after he runs over X-24 with the truck and impales him on the thing, he's got no shells left and he tries to shoot Logan and the gun just clicks. It's like, just that look at him. Logan looks at him like, I, I can't can't say sorry to you for what just happened. Wait, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna close his eyes, you know, shoot me if you want. I don't care. That guy's looking at him like we took you into our home. We gave you a meal and offered to let you stay the night with my kids and my family. And and this is what you bring on us. Sorry doesn't really cut it in that scenario. Another issue I have in the movie is that Logan doesn't decapitate X24 right then and there. He's like, there's a clone evil me. That is clearly gonna be a problem down the line. Let's take care of that now, why don't we? And then Charles dies and his last words were the Sun Seeker because he wanted the boat that they were gonna have to go out and live on the sea. Oh my god. And when they're burying him, Logan's just like quivering. He's like, there's there's plenty of water here. It should be like he's on the sea. He's like, oh my god, no. So that was about the third or fourth time that I cried. You know what they do at the end for Logan from Lacrosse to the X? And as much as I like that, I think, I think right as Charles died, they should have played the X-Men theme on the piano or something just like... After the music's all sad, and it's just like, da, 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 da. It would be like, oh my god, because really the X-Men started and ended with Charles Xavier. And Logan's just quivering, and he's red in the face, and he's covered in blood and wounds, and he's barely able to stand because X-24 just kicked his ass. And he's breathing heavily through his nose, and he walks away. And this is something that I think a lot of people really don't get. So he starts, like, pounding on the car after it doesn't start with the shovel, and he's swearing at it and going, People in the theater were laughing, and I'm like, he just lost his father figure, close friend, mentor, last remaining mutant, and person he ever knew or loved. Show some f***ing respect. That wasn't supposed to be funny. That was heartbreaking. Logan's a very angry, bitter guy. Logan doesn't process grief well, so he would, you know, get rid of it through anger. Also happen to have one of the top comments on Jeremy John's spoiler video, 470 likes, no big deal. And then there's the scene between X-23 and Logan in the car where Logan's coughing and his eyes are like hot beat red and he's like barely able to talk and he's trying to explain to this girl who barely speaks English that this, this is bullshit, it's a fucking lie, I am not taking you to North Dakota. And that's the scene that they're going to play at the Oscars when Hugh Jackman wins Best Actor. There are a couple inconsistencies about the premise of the movie. Caliban, first and foremost, who has a British accent now. If you remember him in X-Men Apocalypse, he was all like, You look like Caliban's father. Not so much here, but more so up here. And now he's all carrying on like Nosferatu below decks. And it's like, this is a completely different character. And also just the time period of the movie. I said in my um, top 10 most anticipated of 2017 video that Logan takes place in 2077. I don't know where I got that number from, but that's actually I do. That's the year the bombs fell in Fallout 4, huh. But the movie actually takes place in 2029, which is only five years after the end of Days of Future Past. The end credits of Days of Future Past, you know, when they're all alive in the X-Men mansion again, everybody looks fine. And then in five years, they go, <laughs> You should have given that at least 15 years. That was, too, that was too quick a time jump. Something else that they were talking about in some of the interviews is that James Mangold and Hugh Jackman said they had an idea to bring Liev Schreiber into the movie. They would have, like, an old man saber tooth scene and they said like i don't know why it never happened but it never happened I'm like that would have been great so i mean you have super good great perfect hard closure for wolverine and charles but you don't have any closure for ian mckellen or liev schreiber and i think those two are the counterparts of those other two people maybe because they're getting their own solo rated r depressing movies i mean i just had the greatest idea and you could call it victor <laughs> Seriously, I would not be opposed to that, for them doing this for pretty much the end of every X-Men. It's like the reverse of X-Men Origins. Because, you know, if Wolverine hadn't been so shitty, they were going to do that for every X-Men. It's like, X-Men Origins, Wolverine, X-Men Origins, Cyclops. But do the opposite of that and be like the end of each X-Men and show where they are now and how they died. That would be a really, really cool idea and actually would really be on board if they were willing to do that. Show it with Magneto. Show him trying to, like, you know, hide, stay away from society and people keep coming after him or something. Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart did have their, you know, closure in Days of Future Past, but I, I still wanted to see what happened to Magneto. But man, that ending, that ending hit like a Mack truck. I told you that scene in the forest was gonna be awesome, and it was awesome. Poor Logan. Oh, man. That guy has experienced more physical 
and emotional pain than anyone could even fathom. That guy has saved mutants, that guy has fought against mutants, that guy has been manipulated by the government, he's been outcast by society. After all the shit, all the X-Men movies that this poor guy has been through, he's finally, finally at peace. Over the last two decades, we've had two Batmans, two Supermans, two Fantastic Fours, three Spider-Mans, three Hulks, but one Wolverine. And it is Hugh Jackman, and he is now finally finally gone. I also really hope that the Blu-ray is the orange poster, you know, keep white letters on orange because that'll look so much nicer with the spine in my shelf. Suicide Squad 2, that's a nice vibrant green, but everything else is just like white letters on black, white letters on black, white letters on black. My Hateful Eight Blu-ray 2 is like a nice vibrant red on white and I really want Logan to stand out like that. That's about all I had to say, but I'm telling you, Logan is the best movie I've seen in years. I People aren't comparing it to Civil War. People aren't comparing it to Deadpool or Avengers. They're comparing it to the Dark Knight. I mean, since Mad Max Fury Road got nominated for Best Picture, and that was weird, especially since Logan also takes place in the desert and also has Oscar-nominated actors in it, and a director. I think James Mangold was nominated for something at one time, too. Especially with the super different tone and feel, like it's almost not even a superhero movie. I think Logan has got a serious shot at Best Picture. Until this say Logan wins by mistake and then actually announce that, you know, Furious 8 wins the best picture. I think I would literally die. That, that was a really perfect way to end it, too. It's like, Logan is finally gone after all that. Rest in peace, Logan. You earned it. <laughs>